Hello again. Right, well, as usual, things aren't going quite as planned. The uh, extra one of these I ordered uh, online. Uh, I found one second hand at a silly cheap price. Um, it hasn't turned up. Uh, a combination of the UK national bank holiday and postal problems mean it's in limbo somewhere. So I'm going to continue modifying this one and then do the final comparison once the other arrives. So I've, I've already got this one. Partly disassembled to save time. And uh, since the previous video, I've put the correct Zenit in that's now a longer mount on the back of the board. Could do a wash, but I'll do that after I've done the mods. So um, the next stage is to finish converting it fully to a proper true condenser microphone. Uh, that's a little mounting adapter I found uh, designed for on Thingiverse and printed out. I did it for that support, and so it's a bit uh, messy looking, but it's structurally sound and it fits onto the capsule fine. So I'll remove the bias resistor I did for the electric capsule. So that jumper allows me to select either the source or drain of the FET as the input to the uh, face splitter. And that's connecting the, the uh, JFET input stage to phase splitter. Now this, this board could be built in multiple ways. You could leave out the phase splitter and you can link through from the FET directly if you want to build it as a classic circuit. Or you can leave out the FET um, as I mentioned in previously and just use the phase splitter fed from an electric mic. If you're going to use a true condenser mic then you need a power supply. Which is what the other board's for. It's all in on bits going actually. It's uh, very, very tired looking. I think it's gone hollow because it doesn't transfer heat as much as it should. Right, so we now remove the existing capsule mount and uh, fit the replacement. Hopefully, I'm not actually trying this in place yet, but I believe it's supposed to fit these. Yes, it does. I can put one of the screws in loose initially, just to help locate it. And drop the other one over the side. Do that actually with slightly longer screws and washers, finally. So it's not trying to split the. Yeah, it's uh, oh, the screw heads are pulling in a bit much. Two, no. Definitely need screws and washers on that. That's not gripping. So, give me a second. They look like twenty point five over there. Oh, it's attached solidly. Right. So, oh, I see the using the. Um, mm hmm. Now they, uh, right, I see what it is. There are a couple of extra screw holes, uh, sorry, extra plane holes in the plate that they took the wires through, which this hasn't got. However, it has got a passage through the mount. Check to see if it's open yet, but it looks like yes, it is. And I can thread the wires through that rather than using the screw holes. I will 
link to this uh, mount pattern on Thingiverse. I wanted to do one of these. They both come out this side. Right. Okay. That way. So that's the electric capsule mounted. Now the input from the capsule, the red lead, is the gate terminal of the FET, which Go straight up to that PTFE insulator pin. So that one's going on there. And the ground goes to the ground there, U4 on the board. So they both want cutting back a bit. I'm going to two them short. So hopefully, if I just get them. Right, and grip them there, and uh, strip a bit back without pulling them too much. I'm just get me tip my thumb over the hole they come out of to help hold them. Sort of stop all the force being put onto the uh, wire itself. A holder. Right. So the signal wire, the red one from the diaphragm, is going to go on to the gate terminal there, which is I could actually do a little bit of tweezers for that. It's a little bit on the top side to hold. I'm trying to get my thumb in there until I'll be able to see things. It's a little bit awkward. And I've got to stop this thing rolling about at the same time. Right. And the body wire. Earth used to go back to that terminal there, that pad. So that's the capsule connected. A little bit more on that, it's just uh, springing about. Then it needs the power supply board fitting, which is going to go on the other side. fit there and uh, that puts the three through connections directly in line. I don't know if you can just see through them or not but they are directly in line with the uh, three open pads on the other board. But I mean you could use rigid wires if you never want to take it apart again but I've seen this is a prototype. It's the first time it's been tried. Uh, I'm going to put flexibles on keep the things reasonable apart. So I'll have cuts away and I'll connect the two together. And that's the bias output. This is, this is a prototype, it's got some mods because the inductor's uh, phasing was wrong. Well, I saw that it's got quite a few track mods on it. The next version won't have them. But the next, uh, the, the other version, uh, I've done the next version of this actually has position for three and three or oh, sorry it has positions that would take th the inductors in either phasing there's three three pairs of holes you still only use two inductors uh, but 
but one uh, has the phase in reverse depending on which you put it in. So you can try it each way around, see which works before soldering. See which one actually makes the oscillator run properly and produce a high voltage, the you other know, 50 volts or so, and then solder it in to avoid problems because uh, you know, different makes of inductors may be wound differently and uh, they could have either relative phasing if they only had one set of holes like these, this one, then it may or may not work. You have to mess about with it. Trying to chop tracks or twist wires, which oops, is preferably avoided. So I'm trying to just wedge those in to make it easier to solder. I've got to left the, uh, the stripped ends very short so it's not. Easy, necessarily. Right, that was still not gone properly. Not fully flowed. Right. So those three need to go to the matching three on there. I don't want to leave them long enough to fold over. So I'll chop them out of that. Actually, be possible to put uh, individual uh, pin header pins and sockets between the two boards, and we make this plug in. And I think the the ten pin IC socket strip style and the matching pin headers between them might give about the right spacing. Let's just try that on the next prototype. I do. But it will depend on the microphone frame thickness. Whether it's suitable for any particular mic or not. Right, fit them to this side for ease. It's a bit of a cheat, but uh, it's easier than trying to get around the components from the other side, which are quite tight. Without touching anything or burning anything. And that's the first time I've connected these two boards together. It's the first, first prototype setup of building. So I'm curious to see how it all operates and what voltage it get. And I've tested the boards individually and they seem okay. But uh, it'd be interesting to see what it works like when connected to power. Right there, now attached. So try and keep those folded back down to the connector end of the mic and that keeps them away from the more sensitive circuitry at the top and minimise any noise pickup. Put a screw in there yeah, and also the holes in the next batch of boards are seem to be bigger. I thought the screws were a bit smaller than they actually were. <laughs> so, a bit of a, a stiff fit at the minute. They do go through. You squeak a bit. I'll do one screw. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I don't want to risk it turning and shorting to anything, so I'll put my two in. See, they do start, but they're just a little bit too small to go through by hand. Right, so that now needs powering up and uh, because I've got the main computer turned off to keep the noise down, I need to get my laptop, so that's going to be another brief pause. Okay, the Focusrite in interface is now being powered from the laptop. So this uh, cable has phantom power on it. Um, now let's see if this thing actually does anything or not. 
What's it set to at the minute? Yeah. Uh, oh yes. Yeah. I'm getting a. I'm getting a light. Audio indication light. I don't know what it's doing, but I'm definitely getting an audio indication light. I'll move that so it's visible. So I'm going to prop it up. Let's hold the rail. Okay, that's uh, definitely responding to something. I don't know what. Like I say, it's the first time this has ever been powered as a pair. So I've not a clue what, what it's going to be doing, if it's giving the right voltage or anything. So, let's have a look. That's the bias feed through from the power board. 43 volts, which looks reasonable. Oh, hang on. <coughs> I've got the uh, microphone down from connected to the wrong pin. The bias, I'm, mess I'm confusing myself, I'm not looking at the circuit. The bias goes from the connect three through connection there from the other board to that resistor to there. That is the microphone connection, not that one. The gate is connected to a low voltage bias there. Uh, to adjust the uh, the bias on that device to ensure it's in the best best part of its linear range, but there's no no bias feed, or rather there's only probably only a volt or so on that feeding the capsule. So it's not very sensitive at the minute. I wonder if it's not doing much. I wonder what voltage it's actually got on it. Let's just run it. Yeah. So that is the highest voltage it's getting. 1.5 volts, near enough. <laughs> okay, let me switch that to the correct input and see what it does then. That's the correct terminal for the capsule. Let's turn the gain down a bit. So it's got uh, the high voltage bias supplied. Now, What's it doing? Have we got a signal? Have we got uh, anything? There's something there, but I don't know what. Oh, it's picking something, but I don't know what. I'll have to... Uh... Oh, there we go, yeah. It's picking uh, picking voice up by the look of it. I don't know if it, how how or why, but no, no. Okay, I've. Mm. It's partly working, but not working properly at the minute. It could be the bias, could be anything. Um, I do need to check voltages and see what's going off. Two point three six. That's more like it. It's got about two volts now across each resistor, which should put it somewhere in the linear range. What the uh, phase bit has got on it? Ah, there's something messed up. There we'll look of it. Phase bit bias is wrong. Don't know why. There's definitely something wrong there. Hmm. This board's got a problem somewhere. I've only got about 0.4 volt, volt bias on the phase splitter transistor which is not going to be messing things up because it should have about one third supply on there so i put the wrong value resistor in by mistake which is not impossible oh i have <laughs> i put a 4.7k instead of a 47k dough right okay that's a point if you ever use resistors from bandoliers or you ever get them in bandoliers it's completely off topic uh, if you just pull them out of that don't put them in breadboards plug in breadboards until you cut the last quarter inch off the end of the wires because they tend to have goo you know adhesive from the bandolier tape on the ends of the things and if you plug that into your breadboard uh, it will mess up the contacts so always trim them off or cut them out of the bandolier inside the uh, sticky ends. Anyway, back to this. Hopefully now, I've got the proper 
uh, bias voltage on that transistor. I've corrected my silly mistake. Let's try again. Right. So the base should be, that's more like it. So the two low resistors, that's got about six volts on it, and that one's got about two volts on it. Yeah, so they're, they're, that's quite reasonable. Now that should be working nicely, that I would think. Is it working? Yes, there we go. That's more like it. So you can see it's responding, or seems to be responding to audio. Though only a recording and playback will uh, give the full story, but I think it's picking up the hum from all the equipment under the end of the bench. That could be also be a bit of stray pickup because I've got a case on it. Uh, let me put it back together. So that should be uh, working reasonably well now, in theory. Now the only way to be sure is of course try it. Now at the top, I did try just check that that will fit there. It will, but it's a bit of a snug fit. You can't just push it straight in. You've got to go side to side to get the screws past the notches in the cover. They won't actually fit if they're fully out, but they'll fit if you work it in one side at a time. And the the foam is far enough away so it won't touch the diaphragm. It it's, follows the contour in, inside reasonably well. So that should give a reasonable breath screen, which is absolutely essential. And that's something like central, so the can will go around it. That's uh, pretty well centered by the cam sunk screws pulling into the holes. Yeah, and that big cap does just fit inside the cover. That could be a different style, that's just the type of item to have. It could be a lower profile one. And the next version of the board's got multiple holes in there for different sizes. To suit different types. That's not. Not seated right. That's it. It's just a little bit tight at the back. It wasn't centered. Yeah. Oops. So that is now hopefully operational. Of course, uh, as I say, the proof is in the testing. Now it's got the damping and it's not picking up my breath. The sensitivity has changed drastically. There we go. So, yeah, uh, ah, that's a better response. I think it was picking up with breath and vibration more before and possibly just hum from not having the casing on. You can see it's now, if you get it in picture, you can see it's now responding better to voice as it should. And I say, I will do more testing and comparative tests between this and other microphones in a future video. Yeah, if it's turned full up, it's... Uh, it's overloading, the sensitivity is not bad. But yeah, that uh, does appear now to be working. Uh, in fact, I might do a quick recording and sample and play that back. Uh, so you can compare the voice from this microphone to the voice from the uh, camera microphone. Uh, just substitute it or put it on a different channel. Uh, to see, see, we've got a quick comparison within this video. And I will add a video sequence of stills for the uh, conventional component substitution in the uh, other one of these I did. As I, said, I didn't video that, but I did take a lot of photos detailing all the component positions. But I hope that's been of some interest. And uh, thanks for watching. And please hit the like button and subscribe if you like this type of content. And so it improves my view information on YouTube. Okay, thanks and goodbye for now.